I don't know. Hey, you guys. I went to a concert the other night. I saw a ZZ Top in concert. And there's this other band, three-piece band, guitar player, small set of drums, and a keyboard. Nice big old keyboard they had to put on stage. And this was uh, what I bought from that band at their merch booth. And you like the Rattlesnake, Texas, Coors, uh, Lone Star State, so it's got that one stair, red, white, and blue. Uh, really nice patch. Had him sign the keyboard player signing on the back for me. But I met the drummer and the guitar player, shook hands. I didn't take any pictures because I think that's just so cheesy. But uh, I got this patch. It was a $20 patch, but uh, I thought it was well worth it. See how big it is compared to my hand, man? That's a big patch. I mean, that's a big patch. So I got the patch, and then uh, I couldn't. I went to the uh, ZZ Top was selling stuff inside, but shirts were like 40 bucks. So I uh, I uh, couldn't buy a shirt inside. So I was going to the parking lot, went out the front door, of the Surf Ballroom and Museum in Clear Lake, Iowa, the place where the music died. And anyway, uh, there was, he was selling shirts out front for 20 bucks. Oh man, it was a buy, but only took $10 in cash because the bar there has changed his policies now. It's either cash and or card, so you don't have to buy drink tickets anymore. So uh, I didn't have the cash. I continued to walk around the side of the the building and out into the parking lot. Uh, I got about three quarters of the way to my truck, and there's another guy selling t-shirts. He said, 20 bucks. I said, I only got 10, man. He said, fuck it. I'll take it. <laughs> I said, really? You got a double X? He said, let me look. He reached in his bag. He brought out a whole bunch of, yeah, I got a double X, a ZZ Top uh, tour t-shirt for 10 bucks. I was happy, man. I was really happy. I, I tried to make a video yesterday. Uh, I don't know why it was taken down. I, I can't find it. But I wanted to give a shout out to a couple of people. Uh, got a package from Brad V. And I can't open the packages again anymore because they're gone. But Brad V sent me a new sticker. Look at that, buddy. New sticker. Signed her on the back. Thank you, Brad V. Um, he also sent me a, a keychain. You know, I, I haven't seen these before. I never saw him have them. I didn't know he was sending them out or anything. Just cool as shit. It's wood. I mean, it's good construction. It's nice material. I don't know if it's Chinese or whatever, but that's a uh, that's a cool little keychain. So I'm kind of happy with that. And then he sent me a a race win. I didn't have a new uh, Australian mint kangaroo, so I won one. King on, I had to have it. And I don't have the actual kangaroo in here turning around for you, but uh, I took it out, put it in another safe. But here we are. That's a representation of that coin. And then what did I get? But in my other package... Another, look at this, Angry Warrior Tackle Box, new. I thought it was a sticker at first. No, no, this is a magnet, folks. So it goes right up here on my computer. I won't have this on the file cabin with the rest of them. I have this up here on my computer. My wife says all those magnets on the computer screws up the electronics. Says, no, it doesn't. They're shielded. 
and the magnets are so weak that it doesn't matter anyway. So I got a a uh, angry warrior tackle box magnet. Now, the other thing that I got from Angry Warrior was, and I wanted him to do a custom pour from me, I wanted him to do a trap. And I had sent him two or three ounces of silver and pictures of prototypes, and Hillbilly was supposed to try and cut him something, and didn't work out, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I saw a, uh, a pour that he had done. I don't know if it was on, it was on the ladies or Brad. It was Brad V stream, I think. And I saw one, I tried to win it and I couldn't. So I texted him and I said, how about that uh, one? And he said, yeah, I got two sides. I got the bigger one, smaller one. He says, just send me a couple more ounces of silver and we'll call it even. Okay, no problem. Package arrived the other day. Look what I got. I wanted one of these immediately when I saw it. And I knew exactly what that airplane was. That's a C-130, people. If you've never seen one, never been on one, never been around one, you would know exactly what that was when you saw it. This is a 3.3 ounce. Right there, Angry Warrior Tackle Box. A 3.3 ounce pour. Now, look how big that is in relationship to that patch. Yeah, buddy. Or how about in relationship to a coin? Uh huh. And it's a chunky monkey, believe me. Anyway, I had to have this because, and there's a couple other ones of his I want to buy also, but uh, he said because he couldn't get that other one done, he'd make me deal on this one. So we got it done. And, uh, yeah, I know he works hard, and, and porn's just a hobby for him, but... Uh, Maybe when he retires someday, he can he can actually do this for a living because he's pretty damn good at it. Uh, in the military, I was uh, for 14 years out of my military career. Anyway, I jumped out of these bad boys, C-141. Now they have a C-17 instead of a C-141. C-1 uh, C-141 got retired. Uh, jumped out of these C-7As, C-17s, Caribou's, not the new ones. Caribou, prop plane. Um, helicopters, Blackhawks, uh, Hueys. Uh, jump out of. I didn't get my balloon jump in England. That one got scrubbed. I didn't. Oh, my HH3 Jolly Green jump uh, out of the container. I didn't get that jump either. That one got scrubbed. So, but I got a balloon jump civilian wise. But I was also a jump master and then enough jumps of enough types and kinds to become a master parachutist, static line master parachutist. I uh, went to Halo school, so I'm a novice Halo jumper. Hey ho, Halo. Um, not a Halo jump master. I missed that school. Didn't have any Halo teams in the 12th group or scuba teams at the time, so no Halo teams, no Halo jumps in 12th group. Um, the only other school that had to do with air in the military that I missed going to was Pathfinder school. And they no longer do that school anymore. Um, they put that requirement, Pathfinder requirement, on individual units to train those people. <laughs> so I did do that individual training with a unit. Um, but I got to go to, um, and you guys might not know this, but the, 
there are two forest uh, fighting forces that the United States government has. One is Department of the Interior, and um, the other one is Department of Agriculture. Department of Agriculture has its own smoke jumpers, and um, their school is out in Missoula, Montana, at the airport out there. So we had a um, memorandum of understanding, and MOU uh, with the Department of Agriculture, and uh, we went out to their rough terrain parachuting portion of their firefighting school in Missoula, Montana. So I got seven jumps or eight jumps out there with them guys, uh, some different aircraft. So that was fun, wearing Elvis suits, helmet, uh, face shield, all the equipment. Oh, man. Yeah, it's brutal. But uh, it's fun trying to hit postage stamp size drop zones from 3,000 feet or 4,000 feet under a uh, eh, fairly terrible parachute compared to the military's round parachute compared to the military's. So, yeah, that was fun too. I did a lot of jumping. And whatever experiences I didn't get in the military, I got in the civilian life. And as you know, I still try and make a few jumps every year. I'm trying to make it till age 70. At age 70, I think I'm going to quit, which is in two more years. So hopefully I can make at least two or three jumps for the next two years. And I'll be a happy man. But yeah, I thought that was great. And he cleans them up really, really nice. 3.3 ounce or Angry Warrior Tackle Box. Look at that bad boy. Yeah, we'll see if we can do this. All right. Now. You saw my uh, my thumbnail. Look at my thumbnail on this video uh, when you go out there. Hey, Angry. <laughs> Just gave you a shout out this morning. <laughs> you like that. I like that. That, buddy, that just that's memories for me. That's nothing but memories. And like I said, if you've never seen a C-130, bet on a C-130, jumped out of a C-130, you know exactly what that is when you look at it. Exactly what that is. I knew exactly what it was the moment I saw it. And I wanted it. So, yeah. I, uh, I had to have that. It's a, you know... Oh, I was going to tell you about my uh, the thumbnail on this video. God dog it. Come here. Stand up. Yeah, we just stood it up on there. The thumbnail on my video, uh, you look, it's a young lady in a motorcycle. No, that's not shift. I wouldn't put shift's motorcycle up there. I got a picture of hers also, but... Uh, that's my youngest daughter and her new motorcycle. And I can't even tell you what it is. It's a Harley. That's all I know. It's a big Harley. Her and her boyfriend. And he, he won't be my, he won't be my son-in-law by law. Because they don't believe they believe in getting the state involved in uh, marriages like that. And I don't either. Um, shouldn't be a legal contract at all, period. I don't believe. But uh, anyway, he's a, an Iraqi um, vet. He was an MP. I don't know which MP unit he was with. But uh, he was an armorer, which means he fixed the guns. He's the one that handed them out, took them in, inspected them for cleanliness, put them back on the rack, locked them up, blah, blah, blah. He's the one that fixed them. 
and uh, had him out here shooting the other day. It's fun uh, getting to shoot with him. And that's my youngest daughter and her motorcycle. I think maybe my next thumbnail will be my middle daughter and her puppies. And my puppy, the one that died. But hey, man. All right, let's see what we got here. You're welcome, Angry. You're out. You're very, very welcome. I know you work hard, man. You got a civilian job. You work hard. You're doing construction work. I did it. I did it for a lot of years. And I know this thing, uh, pouring thing is a, uh, uh, a side hustle for you. And I, I really appreciate uh, you doing that for me. Maybe one of these days we'll get that trap done. Um, I would like to do that, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I know everybody wants it now, don't they? And it all started out with those with those anvils. And I'm, I'm going to get one of those anvils, but uh, anvil for Tom. Meg wanted one for Tom because Tom makes knives, you know. I make knives, and me and Tom are going to do a knife swap one of these days. Black P. Oh, that's a G43, though. That's a 43X MOS, and I can't touch it. I had it um, on my pillow the other day. I did another video yesterday doing the same thing, doing this shout-out to Angry and to Brad V., and showing the stuff I got. And I don't know if it was because I took a pointer like this. I took my pen and I pointed at something on the gun. I pointed to the uh, uh, magazine release because I'm going to replace that. Put a steel one in there instead of a plastic one. So I can use the uh, higher capacity mags. But that video went bye-bye. I don't know where it went to. And we'll see if they leave this one up. Because um, I I age, I age didn't age restrict it. Yes, I well, I age restricted. it. I said, uh, yeah, this one's okay for kids, but not for anybody under 18. Okay, so we'll see if that does it. Therapy. And that's why I do knives, dude. That's exactly why I do knives. I can go out there and not think about anything else except steel. Yeah, I know, man. I think I was on MLZB that night when you had that goat gun on there, and that just went away. It was done. So I, YouTube is so stupid. Uh, when it comes to weapons, unless you uh, are commercial and you buy um, your time, because there are so many uh, gun channels out there that shoot, that take them apart, that blah, blah, that do everything. And the one video uh, where I was showing all my carry guns, my carry rotation, I was dropping mags, opening a chamber, showing the camera. Nothing in there. And then um, we were discussing some safety issues and remedies uh, for those issues. Um, and the appropriate way to carry. I have several different holsters I was showing. And that one went bye-bye immediately. And they said, they didn't give me a strike, but they said, you have to read our uh, community guidelines. So I went to read community guidelines and it said, I can show guns, but I can't touch them. Okay, so I'm showing a gun. I'm not touching it. It's just sitting there doing nothing. And you can see right behind your sticker there or your magnet. Look it. There's no magazine in that gun. Matter of fact, here's a mag. There's the one that was in the chamber. So it's unloaded. It's safe. It's an empty gun. It's uh, like a pair of pliers laying there. That pair of pliers won't do a damn thing unless you pick it up and have something in your mind that you're going to do with it. It's a tool. 
Guns are not good and bad. Guns are not evil or good. Guns are just a tool. That good, bad, that evil or bad, or evil or good, that's all in the mind of the user. That's what it is. And I, YouTube and uh, the lefties can't get that through their head. It's all about control, man. They take away your guns. You you are finished. You are finished as a society when they take away your guns. Yeah, well, like I say, the people going to unlie themselves are going to do that anyway, whether they're on video or whether they're not. Doesn't make any difference. So then what YouTube is saying is um, it's okay to unlive yourself, just don't do it on our time. That's bad business. Bad for the bottom line. Well, all about money, isn't it? You don't really care about people. You don't care about society at all. You just care about your money, your bottom line. Fuck them. I don't care. And we'll see when I end this stream uh, what they do. Well, we're doing a live stream right now. But I can't touch the gun. So I won't. I'll just have it laying there. And maybe tomorrow when I open some more mail or a day after, I will have a different one there of my carry guns. Now, this 43X is a great little gun because Glock changed the grip angle on this one just slightly. It's narrow enough. Fits my hand. I hate Glocks because they look so blocky and ugly. That's the only reason I didn't like them and the grip angle because I'm an old 1911 guy. But uh, the 43X, I shot uh, uh, a friend of mine had it. We were out here shooting and I tried it and I liked it. So I went and bought one. Um, now I carry it. Um, you can get, and I don't have it here with me. Um, the higher capacity mags, but they're steel. So when you get those higher capacity mags, um, you need to replace the magazine release. Otherwise you'll wear that out and then your mags won't stay in your gun. So you use plastic for plastic and use steel for steel. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to take it apart and do a little filing on the trigger just to smooth that out because that trigger is really sucky. And it's got the, Factory Glock sights where it's got a white dot in the front and it's got a white U in the back. That's all that, that black white U or that back one has to be whited out or damn man. That back white U on that back sight has to be blacked out because you want your eye to concentrate on the front sight, not the back sight. Not aligning sights. You want your eyes to be naturally drawn to the front sight. And if you're having terrible times with your aiming, do that. Also, say to yourself as you're shooting, as you're aiming, mutter to yourself, front sight, 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 front sight as you squeeze that trigger. Front sight. Front sight, front sight. Get that in your head. Concentrate on that front sight. Well, all right, there's seven. Uh, for a minute there, I thought I had already been shut down. Well, seven, I'm going to tell you what. The only reason you have a handgun is because you can't carry a rifle. Or, and, and I mean that in social situations, out in general public. And the only reason to have a handgun is to get to your rifle. If you find yourself in a firefight with just a pistol, you're screwed. You are screwed. Think about it. Handguns range is how far. 
50 yards if you're lucky. If you're really good, you might be able to hit something at 100, but that takes some practice. Okay. How about that rifle? Yeah, I can hold somebody off all day at 300 yards with a rifle. All day with a 223, I can hold them up at 500 yards. So, if you don't have a rifle and you find yourself in a firefight with a pistol and you have longer ranges, you're screwed. You should have a rifle. And that's what your pistol is for, is to get to your rifle. I have another drill. You can put up just a stationary paper target at five feet. This is not a draw and shoot drill. This is just a shoot drill. Concentrate on a spot on that target at five feet. Fire. Fire two more at the same exact spot. See where your holes are. Back up to 10 feet. Do the same thing. Back up to 11 or uh, 15 feet. Do the same thing. Then to 20 feet and do the same thing. You will notice that your bullets, your bullet spread will start to get bigger, 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 bigger. And um, if you're just bottom left of the target, just a little bit at five feet, at 20 feet, you're going to be way bottom left of your target. And bottom left, uh, more times than not when you're shooting, if you're shooting bottom left or low left, it's from grip. Readjust the grip. All right. But you'll find that uh, the spacing... And your mistakes are getting bigger and bigger as you back up. So concentrate at five feet to put all three of those bullets in the same hole. When you can do that, you can back up to 20 and hit all three in the same hole. And normally a pistol, uh, uh, modern altercations are taken at what? Eight feet and under. So... Then you're going to have to start working on uh, draw and shoot. No aiming, just pointing. So point and shoot drills. But with the draw. And if you're carrying concealed, getting that gun out and pointed, you really need to work on it. Because people don't take into account that, yeah, I got a shirt over it. I got a coat over it. I'm drawing from 3 o'clock inside the waistband or outside the waistband. Or I'm drawing... Um, underneath my shirt, underneath my coat appendix or whatever. I carry both, both ways. Um, getting that shirt lifted up, getting that coat out of the way, getting that gun out of the holster and two hands on it, pushing it out. You might not even have time to push that pistol out. You might just have time to draw point shoot right here, right at your belly. So you need to work on drills. And we shoot out here, I mean, thousands and thousands of pistol rounds. Thousands of them. <coughs> I think I've got about, <coughs> I don't know, 20,000 9 mil rounds out there now. Bunch of 22s. And my favorite round, everybody knows this in the world, is not the 9 millimeter, is not the 380, is not God's caliber, the 45 ACP or the 44 or the 357. My favorite caliber and a semi automatic handgun is a 38 Super. And again, if you want to go online, look up all the 38s. Um, they Somebody did a breakdown of all the 38s. Uh, which the nine millimeter is nine millimeter and a 38 super same bullet blah 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 okay and a 380 380 underpowered round still a nine millimeter bullet I call it a nine millimeter short like a 22 short then you have the nine millimeter parabellum but there's another one in there another 38 caliber bullet and uh, some over nine millimeter but I call the uh, nine millimeter parabellum, I call that the nine millimeter long rifle and a 38 super longer case, same bullet, um, more powder, more oomph. 
more knockdown. I call that nine millimeter mag. I have two Colt 1911s and 38 Super. Love those guns. Love that round. My first handgun when I started getting into shooting was a 38 Super. Draw from concealment. Yeah. Exactly. You are exactly right, Angry. Drawing from concealment. And remember, uh, you're supposed to bring that gun up to the middle of your chest, push out, and acquire your sights as you're pushing out, and then shoot. You may not have time to do that. So also practice. Drawing from concealment, just pointing and shooting right from where your hand is. And that's probably where your elbow is going to be right alongside your hip, and you're just going to shoot right from close to your body. Just pointing and shooting from there. Because, like I say, most of your uh, altercations are going to take place within 10 feet, 8 feet more than likely. So you ain't going to have time to push a gun out and aim. Snappy as a 40? Yeah, it's a little snappy. I don't think it's as snappy as yeah, it probably is as a 40 cal. But I always thought a 40 cal was um, just a I think that one's going to go the way of the dodo bird. I don't think that round will be around long. 38 Super does everything that that does. Um, and why not go to a 10 millimeter? If you're going to go to a 40, why not go to a 41? Have a little bit more mass. You're going to have a lot more uh, velocity. 10 millimeters are what uh, bear guides are carrying up in Alaska. So, yeah, granted. It doesn't have the same mass as a 45, but it's got a hell of a lot more velocity. So I think the next gun that I get is going to be in a 10 millimeter. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I want one just to try one. It's like a 5.7, 28, 5.7 by 28. I don't think that round will be around long either, but uh, there was a lot of hype. And I didn't want to pay the money for a Smith & Wesson or a Ruger, so I bought a PSA when they came out. Damn fine weapon. Damn fine weapon. For a couple hundred dollars less. Why wouldn't you do that? So I have one out in the safe. I fire it every once in a while. It's a nice gun. I don't think it's any better than uh, 17. I don't think. But... I don't know. There's this hype that uh, that 5728 could defeat level three armor. Yeah, and it might be able to with the right bullets, uh, but I don't think that'll be around long. I think it was a, a fad, but we'll see. I thought the Creedmoor was a fad uh, until the PRC started coming out. Now you got a six five, a six, a six, a six five, a seven um, in PRC. And I, I hunt with a 7 millimeter mag. I think if I was going to buy another rifle to hunt with anywhere in the United States, I would get a 7 millimeter PRC. I mean, just looking at ballistics um, and everything to do with it, I think I would probably buy the PRC. 7 millimeter, though. Not the 6.5 or the 6. So, just saying. Some of those calibers in the PRC are going to go away. Some will stay. I think the 6.5 will stay because of the Creedmoor. Um, I don't know. But I'm one of those guys that buys odd calibers, and then uh, nobody shoots them, and they go away. I have a uh, Ruger Red Hawk with a 9.5-inch barrel. Nice revolver. I got it in 480 um, Ruger. 480 Ruger. Who in the hell shoots a 480 anymore? Can you even find ammunition? Yeah, I can still find it, but it's way expensive. It's a fine round. It's got the kick of a 44. It's got more range, more mass than a 44. It's like a um, and it ballistically it falls between a 44 and uh Oh, what the hell is the other round? Not the 460, but the 
460 got too much kick for me. I tried one in a handgun. I would have to have that in a longer barrel revolver. Um, something with a little little mass to it. Uh, oh, what the hell is that other bullet? That other round that I can't think of, guys. Come on. I'm thinking of it, but I can't think of it. Yeah, an M and P nine C on my lines. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, if you uh, listen to um, a channel, and I, I view quite a few gun channels, there is one channel called She She S H E equips herself, and it's a woman, a very small woman. She's five two, 110 pounds, and uh, she shoots and she carries. And she explains uh, why she picks a gun she does. Well, she's a very small woman, has very small hands. Her husband's a police officer, so that's how she got into shooting uh, when they got married. But uh, she has her own channel and training courses and all that crap, uh, and she pushes them. But um, the other day, um, she was on, and she was uh, comparing... Um, 19x or no the uh, 43x with uh oh man one of the smith and wessons and she found that uh her hand fit the smith better than the glock um for her and her small hands uh, the controls on the Glock were just a little too far out of her reach. So she had to adjust her grip on the pistol to adjust or to uh, engage a slide lock, to release a magazine. And when she had it sitting right in the web of her hand, like she likes it, like it should be, her finger wouldn't reach a trigger. I mean, it would reach it, but it wouldn't go around the front of it. She couldn't get the tip of her finger on a trigger. So she was a little off-centered on the web of her hand to get her finger on a trigger. That's what she didn't like it. But she carried it. She shot it well. Um, she carried it for a week. <laughs> Excuse me. She carried it for a week, uh, but she liked her other gun that she... Uh, um, I think it was a Smith. Um, she liked that gun better. So I, uh, my hands are slightly bigger than hers, and I can show you on the gun if I get, was allowed to pick it up. But this one uh, is thin enough. And actually, my main carry gun is a Canic TP9 Elite SC. So it's a subcompact compact, compact bordering right on that line. I need uh, extended magazines with a. Uh, uh, pinky finger extensions, but that gun is the most shootable, the best trigger, and I have a Hollow Sun 407 uh, K on that one, a shake a week. That's my normal carry gun, that Canic Elite SC. Best gun I own, I think, except for my um, my CZ uh, Shadow 2 Compact. I don't know, man. Yeah, I like my 45s too. I like the grip angle on my 45s better. I like the grip angle better. But that's what I started using. If you start using a handgun, say you start with a Glock 17 like the military guys did, or uh, you go to a Glock 19 because it's compact size, which is the size of handgun that I prefer, compact size. Four, four and a quarter inch barrels right in that area. Uh, I'll go down to a 375 or three and a half, but that gun will have to fit in my hand like that Elite SC. Um, that's the biggest thing. When you go to a gun dealer, you want to buy a gun for the first time. You want to uh, get into concealed carry. Try many different handguns, many guns just for the fit and feel in your hand. When you finally find one that fits and feels right in the shop, 
take it out to the range and fire it. Compare it to a lot of different handguns. Buddy, I got 30, 40 handguns. And uh, they all fit me very well. Some are heavier, some are lighter, but they all fit me very well. Yeah, I, I I think the 40 is just a um, in between round, and I think um, it's either one or the other. Why um, limit yourself to that uh, piece of stuff in the middle? I I don't know. And with the advances in ammunition, there's no reason not to carry a nine millimeter right now. I would rather carry a double stack 38 super. If I could find one small enough, but all of my 38 supers are steel frame handguns. I carried a steel frame handgun for a long time, but as I'm getting older, uh, my ass is getting way smaller. Um, my pants are sagging no matter how, how tight I get a belt. Um, I wear suspenders now just to keep my britches up. And you're going to find you have to uh, change how you carry with age. So now I've gone to either aluminum frame guns or polymer frame guns. And uh, that's where I'm at now. I'll probably um, not use my aluminum frame guns after a while and just go straight to polymer because they're lighter. I don't know. I like my 38 Supers. Um, I want to buy a... Uh, A 2011 double stack in 38 Super when they're cheap enough. Right now they're too expensive. They make them. Somebody makes them. I want to make. I want to see them make an affordable one in a polymer handgun, a polymer frame, double stack 38 Super uh, with a four to four and a quarter inch barrel. Somebody has to make one. Yeah, but Glock makes a, uh, a G45 and 380. You might want to carry, try carrying that one. 380 is okay uh, for a self-defense round in a uh, in that parking lot situation. You know that uh, eight to ten feet. 380 is good enough. Just empty the mag. That's you know. Uh, I like the. Uh, the 380EZ. Uh, I like that Glock 45 um, in a 380. I have a uh, Ruger LCP, which I don't like to shoot, but I like the size of the gun because I can just put that in the pocket of my slacks when I'm wearing good clothes, you know, tucked in, button down shirt uh, with a tie, not wearing a jacket over it. I can slip that right into the pocket of my uh, slacks. Nobody knows that thieving even in there. I can put a magazine in the other pocket. Nobody knows it's there. That's why I like that gun, man. I don't have to have a pocket holster. I can just slip my hand in there and slip it right out. It's so small, you can't see it in the palm. You cannot see it in the palm of my hand. That's how small it is. And so I like that gun for what I have to dress up, but that's the only reason I like it. I don't like shooting it. That's for damn sure. I actually had a CZ P10S, which is a subcompact. Oh, I fired a couple boxes of ammo out of that thing. And I probably shouldn't have sold it, but I did. That gun was not, not fun to shoot at all. And it was bigger than my Ruger. So I sold that gun. I probably should just put it back, cleaned it, put it back in a box, oiled it, and kept it. But I didn't. I sold it and uh, got rid of it. And I'm really not one to sell guns. Um, I have a lot of guns I don't shoot anymore. I still have them. I sold uh, some guns in my lifetime. I'm really angry that I sold them, but I did. And so I vowed I would never sell a gun again, but that little P10S, I got rid of that one. 
The one I like shooting is a P10C or the P07. The P10C is a striker fired. I like that one. I like that gun. That P10C is a wonderful gun for a compact size. <clears throat> or if you like a DASA hammer fired gun, which I do because I like to carry cocked and locked with a safety on. Uh, the P07 is still my favorite. Don't care what anybody says. CZ P07, best gun made. I think best gun made. For the money, everyday use, P07, all day, every day. Now, I like my Shadow 2 Compact. Yes, I do. But for a hammer-fired gun, DASA, P07, all day. That's correct, show me. You might not have to use both hands. You might have to use your off hand. And if you look at She Equips Herself, that's the name of her channel. Uh, when she goes out and uh, shoots a handgun for the first time, she goes out and does a, I think she does three 50-shot courses of fire. She uses both hands. She uses her strong arm, strong hand. She shoots with her left, uh, left hand, her off hand. Um... She shoots from the draw all the time, from a concealed draw all the time. So she does a really good job. But again, her husband's a, a police officer, so he knows what's going on. Uh, he's one of those police officers that actually shoots. So, all right, guys, we're going on three quarters of an hour. I'm going to let this one go. Uh, I don't see any more chat. And uh angry was the last chat so i don't know i might have got taken down maybe these videos are too long maybe that's the thing all right there you go live free or die we'll see you